All right, let me get situated and, oh crap, hold on, whoop, there's my notes. Now they're out of order. Okay, bear with me for one second, this is not gonna be good, hold on. I'm sorry, this is embarrassing. Um, okay, I'm just gonna go with this and let's hope. Uh, vegans are stupid, what the? I eat meat and work for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. That's not at all what I wanted to talk about tonight. This is crazy. But I really do work for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. I am the nutritionist at Stanford Inn. Um, my podcast, my YouTube channel, my life, my mission is dedicated to much, a much bigger picture than food. And in my practice, as it's evolved over time, food has gone this way, and implementation and the philosophy and ethic has grown exponentially. And that's what I want to talk about today, making the trade. You're going to hear a lot about nutrition, and the thing is, I want to be clear about this, and I'm doing another talk that I'll go into more depth on this the, tomorrow or the next day, whenever it is. We know a lot about food, don't we, as a species, more than anybody else more than any other species by far. And we're not, we're not getting healthier, you guys. If it were knowledge, everybody I've ever taught has a general idea, whether they eat a little bit of meat or they kind of go to the paleo nutty nut nut, because it is, it's nutty nut nut. But they kind of they fruits and vegetables, they, you know, a little bit of whole grains, they kind of a general idea. But the perception of restriction in the vegan lifestyle is a hindrance to making a change, not knowledge at least not, in a, not by itself. Vegans don't enjoy food. We don't. We hate food. We just wander around. We're miserable all the time. We wear Birkenstocks. Oh, well, we do usually. We have dreadlocks. I took mine off for this talk. I didn't find it was appropriate. I was totally going to make an inappropriate joke about back hair, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. We are miserable, we are restrictive, we are rigid, and we are militant. That's what we are. We don't do well on the vegan diet. We'll make it about protein, and we'll make it about vitamin D, and we'll make it about B12, we'll make it about iron, but the fact of the matter is what keeps people from changing is the perception that it is a worse way to live. Here's a bummer thing, bummer thing too. I've met lots of vegans for whom it is a worse way to live. Ever met an angry vegan? Is there stuff for us to be angry about? I think so. But do we walk out our door with that on the tip of our tongue? Do we walk out of the door about how pissed we are all the time? About what's going on in the world? We know what's going on in the world. But the problem is, is that we exude a restrictive ethic. And when we do, that's what rubs off on people. And they'll make it an argument about protein, but as Garth Davis will tell you, there's, there are going to be 10 studies, probably sponsored by the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, for whom I do work. And then there's going to be 10 that aren't. But we're never going to get that deep. So anybody arguing with you about protein can cite those references. And then they're going to win and they're going to go home. But if they see you living well, We get past that. We have to change the perception of veganism by living an example, which I'll get into in a minute, but we have to change that perception in the way that we live. You know what this is for you, for me? This is restriction versus trade. In 1992, I gave up dairy, and my asthma went away. I haven't had asthma in 24 years. You do the math on that. I was told there'd be no math. I gave up dairy. To this day, oh my God, I could never give up cheese. Oh my God, I could never give up cheese. Did I restrict my diet by giving up dairy? Yes, I did, 100%. Totally restricted it, was eating cheese and milk in my cereal and sour cream on my burritos. And then I stopped. So I restricted. But in the quality of my life, it was the least restrictive thing I've ever done. I was a philosophy major. I had just graduated from UCLA with a bachelor's degree in philosophy and was doing exactly what that degree trained me to do, which was trying to be an indie rock musician. When you sing and you're an asthmatic, that's a quality of life issue. 
When I stopped being asthmatic by giving up dairy, my life got better. What I wanted to do in my life got easier. I made a trade. I said, okay, fine, I'll trade you dairy. And here's what I get back. No asthma, less allergies. On a podcast recently, I found a, re a receipt. My mom is in the habit now, I don't know why, of giving me back my own stuff from her house, like literally pictures of me. I'm like, you don't want pictures of your, okay. But one of the things she gave me was this big folder of stuff and inside was this receipt and a, 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 a basically a, a prescription of sorts of, because I was doing allergy testing and I used to take allergy injections. So I was talking about it on the podcast. Isn't it amazing? I remember strep throat. I remember uh, ear infections. I definitely remember asthma, going to the hospital as a kid. I remember eczema. So really when I restricted my diet, was that restrictive? Or am I living a whole bunch better now because of it? Do you think I'm tempted by cheese? Do you think I want that lifestyle? But this is a thinking thing. This is getting behind the veil. This is what's missing, in my opinion, of, of these of veg fests and, and vegan and, and ethical choices just in their entirety. It's let's get behind the labels for a second, or at least when we walk out our door, be mindful of what lies beyond, or behind rather. Nobody here wants to lose weight. Nobody here wants to lose weight. I change the conversation off weight as soon as a client comes to me. Now I want to lose weight. I go, let's talk. we're not going to talk about that for a while. Because what's weight going to deliver for you? Well, I'll feel better in my body. And Okay, well, wait a second. So it's not about a scale. It's feeling better in your body. It's being happier, isn't it? Is that restrictive? No. So if you go to lose weight and you're all about the scale weight and you're giving up stuff and you're mad because you're on a cleanse that are, that's totally unnecessary, and, but that's a, that's a side point, but you're just all about, I can't go to that party. I'm sorry, I'm on day 14 of the diet. I can't. I'll have to skip that. Thank you. And everybody looks at you and goes, gee, Louise, I'd rather be overweight. Let's get behind the veil. Let's talk about ideas. Let's talk about the ethic. Because what you're going to hear during this weekend is ethical vegans, environmental vegans, health vegans. To me, it's ethics, all ethics. Because if you're doing it for health, you're doing it because you want to live better and feel better and be happier. To me, that's an ethical decision. If you're doing it for the animals, ethical decision. If you're doing it for the environment, ethical decision. We want the world to be better. We don't want it to be worse. Nobody in here is listening to this or is already vegan because you wanted to live a worse existence on the earth. And if you did, what are you doing? You're not helping anybody by doing that. Why would you do that? It's crazy. I have three children and they're all plant-based. They've been their entire lives except for human breast milk. Thank you. They will stand next to me, all looking fine. They have teeth. And people will find out that they're vegan. And they'll go, oh my God, I bet you have to be really careful. Or, really? Your kids? You're, you're going to do that to your kids? Oh my God. And I go, they're, they're, they don't, they have bones and stuff. <laughs> like they can move and their skin's fine and they're never sick and they're maybe antibiotics only one time of all three kids, one time ever. And this idea of like, whew. but let me tell you how we frame our choices about veganism, my wife and I. Here is the Garza Hillman code of, we don't, it's not posted on the wall. Okay, I'm not like a weirdo. <laughs> this is just sort of like what we talk about. We don't cheat. We don't lie. We don't steal. We don't hurt animals. We don't hurt people. It's one of the things in the list. Everybody's so into everything in moderation. Really? Do you kill people kind of sometimes, maybe a little bit? I've been told so many times I'm militant about my diet. I go, really? I'm militant about my diet? I like single malt scotch. <gasps> oh, I don't drink it all the time. I would argue it's good for you, but I'm, you know, whatever. It's just me. But I've literally been told at a party, one time this, I was at a party in New York. I was speaking at New York. 
and I'm at this party, and they have cheese pizza, and they have this salad with cheese all over it. And I'm, I, I ate already. I already eat. I always eat. That's what I do. I eat before I go because I don't want to deal with it. And so they had bought me a bottle of, a bottle of scotch, and so I was having a little scotch. And the, the host says, you know, we could take the cheese off the salad. I said, don't. It's fine. I'm totally fine. No, but we really could. And I, I go, I'm not even hungry. I'm totally okay. I'm holding a scotch, mind you. Got it? She goes, man, you got to relax. I go, what about me holding a scotch does not look relaxed to you? Perception of veganism. To choose or not to choose. When you understand that you are choosing and why, then when you walk out your door, you're doing more for the good of the world than ever getting into a discussion about protein. Do you understand that? Choose. It's a choice. You are making a choice. And when you make a choice about anything, it puts you in what I call an ethical minority. Now, all of a sudden, you're paying attention to something that most people do not pay attention to. Most people go into the market or the restaurant, and they go by feel. They don't go, what has the most vitamins on this menu? They go, what do I feel like? But we say, I can, no, 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 that. I joked one time that vegans have really strong one side of their body. Like our arms are good because we just do this with one side of our, I'll have that. Steamed vegetables and rice. When we make a choice, all of a sudden, we set ourselves apart and we go, we're going to walk out our door and take on a whole nother world of stress when most people can just like go in and just go, I feel like that, that looks awesome, that bear claw. And we go, and we go to a party and somebody says, uh, okay, you can't have that and you can't have that, but you can have that. And I always go, I'm 48. I can have whatever I want on that table. I choose not to have that stuff. And the reason I choose it is because I live better for it. And I think that we forget that when we get mired in the minutia of nutrition. I'm a nutritionist. Of course, of course, we don't want to tr take a chance. It's certainly not with our kids, of course. But what if we marry also our nutritional knowledge with an inspirational reason to actually make the change? Because if you go on a diet and you go vegan for a month, you're probably not going to stick to it because it will be restrictive. But if you attach it to the choices and the life that you want to live, man, oh man, that's a whole other world. Albert Schweitzer, example is not the main thing in influencing others, it's the only thing. Health, ethics. Don't separate health from treating animals well. You treat yourself well and you're an animal. Boom, nailed it. Logic. Logic, nailed it. Philosophy major, philosophy 31. I got a C minus, but I learned something. How you are when you walk out that door, you guys, how healthy you are, how vibrant you are, how happy you are, that's more important than any discussion you will hear on nutrition. But not to say that nutritional isn't important. Of course it's important, but it's not the most important, not in my mind. I want people to remember this. When you go to these veg fests and you take notes on stuff that you never took notes on before, you became vegan. <laughs> Nobody ever sat through lectures about what, why is meat good for them. They just sort of ate. And now we'd make a choice and we want to know every minutia about it. Let's not get my, learn it, know it, but then act. And when you act, it's a bigger picture than food, you guys. It's a bigger picture than food and it always will be. It is about no matter what your motivation is, it is because you want to live better. And when you attach yourself to that, when you walk out that door, you will affect more people than ever by any other method, period. I'll finish with this slide. Is it easier for us not to be vegan? Yeah, it, it is. Is it easier for me not to raise my children vegan? They're the only kids in their entire school that are vegan. This is what exact, absolutely happened last week. I am not joking. My daughter was harassed by a teacher's aide for being vegan. She, I may or may not have gotten her fired. Because harassment's harassment. I don't care what it is. And I'm going to go to bat for my kid. But at a as a 12-year-old girl in a school of all non-vegans being singled out for, for an ethical choice for all the reasons of ethics is 
an abomination. So it would be easier for me to just go, you know what, I think just to not have to deal with this stuff, we should probably just, you know, have a little bit of animal foods, and we can just sort of say that we're, we do it. And so is there a, a high bar for people who make an ethical choice when they walk out their door every day? And we do every day, every day, I am aware that I'm vegan. Every, you know what a load that is on us? All the more reason to take good care of yourself, do what it takes to be happy in your life, because man, that stuff, that will weigh you down. And then you go on YouTube and watch how animals are treated on top of that, so when do we get out of bed in the morning? Is the bar set high for us as vegans? Do we have to be healthier because every time we get sick, it's because we're vegan? Do we have to be happier because every time we seem angry, it's because we're vegan, because we're restrictive? The bar is set high, fine. Challenge accepted. Thank you very much.